is working. Yes. Ooh, excellent connection. All right. That's different than usual. Uh, okay. So let me first reload this to make sure it is. Oh yeah, this is the newest one. I can already see. Uh, I'm not going to do any coding here. Well, maybe I will if I feel like it, but uh, all I really wanted to do is just record a demo of, uh, well, of course it's going to do this while I'm right after I turn on the stream. Uh, just give it a second. Uh, I've already started the live stream, so I'm just gonna not restart it here. Okay, so I've made a lot of progress on um, on the uh, rectangular astrolabe. Let me just turn up the font size in case I do want to show something in the font. Um, so on my to-do list, I uh, managed to get quite a lot of things in since I last recorded. Uh, as you can see, well, this is a spoiler here, but um, so I added a properly shifted time scale on the La Watt. Uh, when I say properly shifted, what I mean is this is corrected for Toronto's longitude and Toronto's time zone. I've written down here, it's a little hard to see, let me zoom in. I've written down here that you know these coordinates in this time zone. Uh, now, uh, the Lawat is the only part that needs to be changed if you were to make one of these for another city. The Ankabut, on the other hand, um, doesn't have to change. Um, the positions of the stars, the markings on the ecliptic, and um, the markings for the civil time scale and the daylight savings civil time scale. Um, those are the same for everyone. Now, one thing that you may want to change if you were to print this for another city is if that city is in the southern hemisphere, uh, you may want to take these scales and move them into the northern hemisphere because uh, you can't even see these stars anyway, so it doesn't really matter if they're blocked. Something that I kind of realized while I was working on this, I don't know if I've mentioned this on a stream yet, is that I see these constellations for the Northern Hemisphere and it feels like, yeah, that's the stars, well, what about it? But then, you know, I, I'm realizing that like, I'm seeing these Southern constellations for the first time as I'm working on this project. Like, I'm, And like, they look so just bizarre and unfamiliar and it must be kind of cool to go to the Southern Hemisphere uh, or to be more precise, the hemisphere that you haven't lived on all your life, and um, just see a different set of stars. That must be really neat. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, this is basically all of the components for a uh, minimum working thing. What I did here with both .svg is I took, well, this and superimposed it onto this. To get that. Now, just by itself, putting both of them into the same SVG is not extremely useful, but uh, let me show you what I can do now that I've done this. Um, I put the Lovat into a group here in the SVG so that I can give it a separate uh, transform. Oops, 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 oops. And now by fiddling with this number, I can sort of emulate what would happen in real life if you had these two cards and you were sliding them, right? So I can move this around, which I think is pretty cool. So let's take it out for a little test drive. Um, one kind of interesting thing that I can do here is I can just uh, compare um, the results I get from using this, you know, these sets of cards to 
uh, an actual um, uh, calculator here uh, that gives you the exact times of the sunset, sunrise, and solar noon. For some reason, they don't seem to have a pin for Toronto. So when I use this, I just plug in the uh, coordinates. It seems to be good enough. Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, it is. Uh, actually, let me fix that. Okay. And yeah, so um, we have set our pin down on Toronto the Good. Uh, actually, just out of curiosity, where is this pin exactly? This is near Young and Eglinton. That's kind of amusing. Um, I go there pretty frequently, but anyway, none of that is super important. Um, now let's create the tables for the year and um, we'll check against these here uh, to verify that this thing is working properly. So let's start by uh, just asking, so today is uh, March 9th. It happens to be the day before we change the clocks for daylight savings, which will be relevant in a second. And uh, let's say I want to know what time is the sun going to set today? Well, uh, oh, I guess I haven't, um, I haven't marked the uh, grid lines on the low watt. That is actually something I should do. But for the time being, let me just move it to where it should go. So this bottom line on the low watt is the horizon. This middle azimuth line here is south. This top one is north. And uh, the so the sun rises in the east, and the eastern part of the horizon is this half and the western part is this half. Okay, well the sun sets in the west. So let me just for a second uh, move this out of the way so I can show um, the ecliptic shows you the position of the sun on any given day of the year and this is reasonably accurate. There's a little bit of drift because it's only showing um, one particular year um, and every four years, like the position of the sun drifts by about a degree per year relative to this set of markings that I've put on, uh, but then we correct it every four years with the leap year. So there's a little bit of inaccuracy there, um, but <laughs> whatever okay uh, so today is March 9th so uh, so here we can see for example the month of June starts here and it goes 5 10 15 20 25 30 July 5 10 15 so over here March 5 and then just a smidge before the second line uh, would be March 9th so what we're gonna do is we are going to align the Western horizon with this point here right under the tip of my cursor. So let's do it. Uh, about maybe right here, would you say? Yeah, about here. So we've lined up our western horizon with the true position of the sun on March 9th. Now, what we need to do, and this is hard to see, I, I have to work on the readability here, but um, now what I need to do is find March 9th on the non-daylight savings time scale, because we're not in daylight savings time yet. So this is March, 
right here, March 5th, March 9th, right here. And so now I read what time of day it is on this black scale right here, and I can see that it is going to be, the sunset is going to be at about six. Each of these ticker marks is 10 minutes, so it just passed 610. Um, oh no, sorry, 510, almost at exactly 610 is when the sun will set. Now, that is when the midpoint of the sun crosses the midpoint of the horizon. Um, there are all kinds of things that can kind of shift the sunset time up or down. There's the refraction from the atmosphere. There's the fact that I'm not seeing the horizon here in Toronto. I'm in fact seeing a bunch of buildings. Um, there's the fact that the solar disk is, uh, I don't know how many, you know, arc seconds it is in your field of view, but it's more than zero. Um, and there's actually different definitions of sunset. There's like, there's like uh, civil twilight, astronomical twilight, and like another kind of twilight. So all that to say, what, now what I'm going to look up today is sunset time. Uh, it may not be exactly equal to 610, but it should be pretty close. So sunset time. Uh, and uh, it's given here as 617 p.m. Now, this is calculated. I actually have no idea how um, Google is returning this result. But um, this is the one that's actually corrected for all those atmospheric effects and um, solar disk and definition of civil or, or nautical or astronomical twilight. And I have no real idea what this is. Now, let's compare that with this calculation here from the NOAA. And this calculation is basically the same as my calculation. In a sense, there's no point comparing my calculation to this calculation because they're the same, except yes, there is a point because I want to know is my calculation correct? Um, or at least am I performing the same calculation as them correctly? Uh, so sunrise, what we want is sunset on March 9th and oh, 617. Well, you know, we got pretty close. I mean, I think it's definitely close enough to feel pretty good about it. So five, nine, and then here, March, five, nine. I mean, yeah, um, I'm definitely putting this at like 610. Um, but, you know, whatever. Um, although something does look kind of weird here that I'm noticing. So. Let me just move this out of the way here for a second so we can see it. Is it just me or is this like spacing a little weird? I don't know. I think it looks okay. I think I'm just getting thrown off because the last couple of days in February are a little shorter. And this year's a leap year, you know, whatever. <laughs> this is the day that it all gets corrected or something. I don't know. It's close enough. Uh, and just for fun, let's do another uh, check. Um, let's say what's going to be the sunset time and at the end of August. So I guess at the beginning of September. So let's do the same thing. We're going to align the western horizon with the end of August, which is, let's, let's say August 30th. Okay. Just a little, yeah, that seems about right. Now, August 30th is in daylight savings time. So we read from this bottom scale. By the way, this bottom green scale is exactly the same as the top green scale, but shifted by one hour. Um, so we go all the way to August 30th and we read the time as 7.55 or so. Okay, so let's do sunset time for August 30th, 2024. Uh, is that what I said? 756? Uh, August 30th. Yeah, exactly. I said 755. They say 756. Potato, potato. It works. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm pretty pleased with this. Uh, this is definitely... Uh, let me just randomly see if there's any comments. No, I didn't think so. I'm pretty pleased with this. Uh, 
as far as I know, this is the first time that somebody has made a astrolabe in equirectangular projection, um, or at least I looked it up on Google and looked on the first page of results and didn't see anything. And I was like, well, you know, it's, it's the first time anyone's done it. Let me pat myself on the back. Uh, but another thing that I also don't see very much in astrolabes, uh, I mean, definitely old timey astrolabes wouldn't even have this. Um, and there's no real such thing as modern astrolabes because we have a better way of keeping time and doing stuff like that. But uh, this correction here, the equation of time for the civil time, is nothing I've ever seen on an astrolabe before. Um, the only time I've seen something kind of get close to this is there is a world where people have bothered to put in uh, tables for the equation of time. Uh, for example, uh, it might be fun to um, find it for you here on Google Maps. Um, at U of T... Hold on, it's just loading, it's being slow. At U of T, in near one of the buildings that I used to work in, oh my goodness, is it ever being slow? But anyway. There is this really neat um, sundial, which I hope I'll be able to, oh my goodness. Which I hope I'll be able to show you here. so cursed I don't know what's going on here uh, while that's thinking I just want to quickly see what the difference is from year to year there should be a very slight drift and then it should go back to so 757 in 2023 756 in 2022 755 or 756 in 2021 and then in 2020 it should snap back to the original because of the whole leap year correction thing um, 756 uh, okay maybe there's more going on here than I realized ah, 757 eh, whatever <laughs> I'm kind of waving hands here yeah see here the solar clock um, I wonder if I can you know, it would have been better just to look it up here on Google instead of trying to find it on Google Maps. But, um, yeah, Google Maps is being super slow, so let me just go ahead and do... Let's see if I can find it. Oh yeah, this is pretty, this is a decent picture. So um, the uh, shadow casting rod, which I believe is called a gnomon, has a little bead in the middle here. It's a little hard to see in this picture and it was probably very hard to see on the stream. And uh, it casts a point on um, around the edge here there's a bunch of markings written down that allow you to correct for the equation of time um, or to perform the equation of time um, based on the time of year. And I actually kind of want to take a quick look at this plaque. Yeah, Toronto Mean Time. I um, wonder when this thing was put up, you know, but anyway. Hmm. Yeah. So there is a precedent for having a uh, equation of time corrections on time pieces. Uh, this is a, an interesting one, but you know, you can get equation of time watches. Uh, there are um, sundials scattered throughout the world where these corrections are put up somewhere for you to see. So 
But as far as I know, this is the first time anyone's bothered to do equation of time on an astrolabe. In a way, uh, the technology is kind of um, obsolete. But I like it. Um, I guess one last thing that we could do here, just uh, something that might be a little interesting, is the sun today is about here under my cursor. And what's the time now? 5.22. So, and we're in standard time, not daylight savings time. So 5.22 is here. So let's line that up with the day of the year. Well, it's cloudy, so all of this is kind of moot, but um, anyway, so 5.22, that's about right. Maybe I'll nudge it just a little like that, maybe. And as soon as the sun sets, um, This is actually highlighting a sort of a usage problem um, with this thing. Um, because most of my low watt is off the edge of the star map when in reality it's supposed to kind of wrap around and be here so you can see what's in the sky at this point in time. Um, and so if you were actually using this, uh, you would want a way to um, keep this alignment, but take the low watt and shift it over to the right. Um, now I can do that here by just adding 100% uh, to this number. So let me just do that in my head here. So if that's minus 63.2 then, if I add 100 to that, then, oh. I do that by doing this. Oh, hey, that's cool. Oh, but it's not quite. Uh, it's not quite right because my hundred percent is the entire size of the box. So, um, so I can add a hundred, but then I'd have to shift it again. So I basically I want the orange border to line up with. Uh, I don't know. I guess this star here. So let's just do that. So this is what my night sky will look like once the sun sets today. I mean, there won't be any clouds, but, or sorry, there, there won't be any stars because there are clouds. But what this tells me is, so this is uh, south, and then each of these lines is 15 degrees, I think, if I remember correctly. 15, 30. 90. So this is east. And then uh, 115, 120, 135, 150, 165, 180. Uh, so I gotta do this. Uh, so this is 90 degrees. So right here in northeast is where the Big Dipper will be, just above the horizon. Um, you can see the Big Dipper in Toronto, believe it or not. Um, uh, there's, uh, there's, the stars are bright enough uh, for you to be able to see it. We'll be able to see Cassiopeia, which, come to think of it, I'm not sure if I've ever noticed Cassiopeia in Toronto. I'll take a look tonight if there's no clouds. Of course, I think there's going to be clouds all weekend. But this is going to be at north, northwest. Um, and what is this? I'm not really sure what this is. Pisces will be visible. And of course, everyone's favorite, Orion. It's hard not to love Orion. This is what the night sky will be the minute the sun sets.
Uh, but then what you do is you say, okay, well, as time goes on, um, the uh, night sky is going to shift like this right up until my eastern horizon hits March 10th here, right? So when the night starts, uh, Cygnus, for example, is, um, oh, wait a minute, no, is Cygnus visible? See, this is the annoying thing about, um, about having to shift it up and down like this, but Yeah, so when the night starts, um, Cygnus is just barely, 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 barely over the northwestern horizon. Um, and this star here, Deneb, is my favorite star for no reason. I just selected it to be my favorite one day. Um, this one will be uh, maybe 18 degrees above the horizon. Um, and then over the course of the next, uh, so what time is it here? So March 10th. So at this point, it's, something doesn't make sense here. I think I aligned this in the wrong spot. Oh no, this is minus 63.2. I understand this is not the sunset time for March 10th. It's like way before that. The sunset time for March 10th is here. And yeah, we only get to see Deneb for um, a couple hours. So if the sunset time is here, so that's at Something like 6:40, maybe. Oh no, I don't have it quite right again. This is this is a, yeah. This is good that I'm doing this because it's kind of highlighting some issues with using this thing. Because um, I'm keep making mistakes, but so March 10th, the sunset is at something like 6:10 and Deneb is just over the horizon. And then if I go to where Deneb dips below the horizon, that is at, so March 10th, so that is at 8.40 roughly, or 8.45. So it's only visible for about an hour. Right? Well, an hour and a half. An hour and a half. So then, then it dips below the horizon, but then it comes back over the horizon not long after. So it'll go out of sight at roughly 8:45. But then, so the March 10th time is. I used to, yeah. Okay. I need to. I need to find a way to deal with this because. Um, now I can't tell what time it is. I can't line up the time with the time scale. Hmm. How do we solve that problem? I guess if you had like a calibrated length for 12 hours, you could, oh yeah, actually. So if you go half a year away, you know, this is definitely kind of an approximation now, but if I go half a year away, so one, two, three, four, five, six months, 
Um, so this is now showing me the time on the ROM AM PM, but I can still kind of use it. It's still sort of workable. So this is like, so if I look at September 10th, it's like 8 p.m. Well, so this would be 8 a.m. on September 10th, or I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense here. I am moving by half of a year and also half of the day so that it, it cancels out and I can just look at the number and say, oh yeah, it's eight o'clock. So all I'm wondering is when does Deneb uh, poke above the horizon again? And it pokes above the horizon here. So if I take a look at September 10th, that's like at 11 p.m. or so. Uh, Deneb shows up again. And then it's visible for the whole night. It'll even pass over, it'll basically be at the zenith. Whoops, whoops, whoops. It'll basically be at the zenith, uh, you know, around here. So March 10th. at something like 10 to 10. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know if you can see Deneb in Toronto. What's the magnitude of Deneb? Let's just find that out. At this point, I'm just goofing around doing whatever. So I can do what I want. It's my life. Uh, 1.25. And uh, limiting magnitude, that's it. For those who live in the immediate suburbs of New York, the limiting magnitude might be four. This corresponds to roughly 250 visible stars. From the boroughs of New York outside Manhattan, the limiting magnitude might be three. And from brightly lit midtown Manhattan, the limiting magnitude is possibly two. Oh. So yeah, actually, we should be able to see Deneb. So if I look straight up at roughly 10 to 10, um, that should be it. The Cygnus will be directly overhead. And if I rotate my body such that I'm facing southwest, then Cygnus will be pointing straight up for me as I look up. So that's kind of neat. Uh, All of this is just like yeah the sun's not coming out for like all week basically mm, mostly cloudy well that's too bad uh, okay so what are we doing now um, there's many, many things that I could still do on this project. Hold on, I just got a text message.
Uh, so the number one problem that I have right now is that it's really, really unpleasant to read these numbers and the dates they overlap each other. It's bad enough that the text is overlapping the stars. I don't really know what I could do about that. Um, but when text is overlapping text like this, it's just awful. So idea number one is try to put the text um, like inside here so that text never overlaps text. Idea number two is um, Well, I don't have any other ideas. <laughs> so, okay, that's the first thing. Um, because the scale is hanging off the end of the card and it doesn't wrap around. I don't know if there's a nice solution for that, to be honest. Um, yeah, I really don't know if there's a nice solution for that. Um, well, that's not true. There is a nice solution, but it comes with its downsides. I could uh, basically have two low watts side by side. Um, and you know, you could fold them in half to put them away or something. That might be workable. It wouldn't be that hard to um, generate that. Okay, and the next thing is I need to put in some labels for the lines here on the night sky. I don't think I need anything too fancy. Um, and there was one more thing I was thinking of. What was it? Hmm, maybe it's written in my to-do list. Oh, right, the labels. That's really tough. I mean, like, I have really made this text ultra small. It might not look so bad right now, but like, um, keep in mind, that this is intended to be the size of the business card. Um, and so this text is like 1.5 millimeters tall at its smallest. That is tiny. Um, I mean, I have a ruler in front of me here and I'm looking at 1.5 millimeters and that is small text. So where on earth would I put in the labels? One idea that I had was I could put in just like single lowercase letters of the alphabet um, and then just have like a legend on the back. But you know what, forget it. Well, I guess I could try putting in labels. Okay, I think the way to do this is, um, I think I want to have a file here that I will call manual placements. A table of things to add into the design. Each entry must say what to draw, and the right ascension. I guess I'll throw it out here. And declination. Um, 
and then maybe a flag to say whether it goes to the robot or on the foot. So right now I am only considering uh, placing in text. I guess I could just I was just thinking to myself that, uh, let me just take a look at the Ankabut by itself for a second. One issue that I've always had with this, which I wasn't planning to fix, but maybe I actually could fix it, is the constellations get skewed the further away they are from the equator, well, the celestial equator. Um, and so it might be nice uh, to uh, put a little, you know, icon that shows the constellation a little bit more uh, akin to what you might see when you look up in the sky. Like, you know, this ridiculous thing here is the Little Dipper. It doesn't look anything like this in person. Um, but actually, the Big Dipper, and in fact, all of Ursa Major does look like this in person. So it's really just <laughs> the little dipper that's messed up. I actually don't know what constellation this is here. I don't recognize it. Um, see if I can figure it out. Oh, yeah. well, okay. Uh, so this is going to be at a declination of roughly, so this is zero, this is 90, so this is somewhere between 70 and 80 and a right ascension of somewhere between like 300 and 360. So what constellation is that? Uh, so Ari star, Ari M. So I'm looking for things that start somewhere around 300. No, it's definitely not Aquarius. I want 300, something like 300 by, say, 70, or maybe, you know. Oh, Cepheus. This looks like it could be it. of Ethiopia. One of Ptolemy's constellations. That's kind of interesting. So is this like, <laughs> like a dunce cap? <laughs> and this is like the king's chin? <laughs> uh, what am I looking at? Oh, I'm married to Cassiopeia. Actually, I don't know who Cassiopeia is. Oh, arrogant and vain, huh? Well, you know. <laughs> and then Andromeda. Hmm. 
it's quite a bit dimmer. Um, so that's probably why I don't really recognize it. So where's the dunce cap? So Cygnus is by the left arm. This is Cygnus, so this is the left arm? What? Wait. And Cassiopeia is the, oh sorry, my left. Um, so by Cepheus's right arm. I don't see it. This here, I'm pretty sure, is Draco or Draco. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. A lot of these constellations I don't recognize at all. This is just a freaking barbell. So, you know. And this is like <laughs> Discount Orion. What is this? Actually, I do know a way. Oh, yeah. So what's the barbells? Canis Venetici. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then what's this quaff dude right here? Hercules. Who's this boots? Heck is boots. Herdsman. Oh, there's a diarysis on the O, so this is probably something like Boats or something like that. Izar is a colorful, multiple star, popular with amateur astronomers. That's interesting.
So. Just a leg. So I guess this is Arcturus. Food dispenser here. I'm just reading Wikipedia on the live stream. What am I doing? Um, I guess I just got uh, sucked into this. Um, all right, let's try and just put in some numbers on the little lot. Uh, one, two. So. Okay, so for the azimuth lines, I guess what we'll do is we will um, place the text. Okay, for the north line, we might have to add a special case, but for everything else, we can just place the text um, underneath the zero point. So here what we can do is size? I don't know. Uh, what did I do? What did I do here for the font size? All right. going to do alignment baseline is going to be equal to hanging um, text anchor is going to be middle uh, yeah that seems about right So, um, the right ascension. What 
is this function doing? As you know from last video, the degrees t is taken to be degrees above the viewer's horizon. Who's this returning? X, Y, Z. Okay, okay, I know what to do. So local um, text placement is equal to A equals So let's just do zero and we'll do if f of abs azimuth minus 180 is less than, I don't know, 1e minus 3. I really don't know why there's a plus 180 here. It must be some old thing that I just never got rid of. I don't know. I'll deal with that later. So, and let's also change this to say label. So this is going to be remap x of label pause r a, remap y. We use the text. Uh, ooh, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I guess we can just do uh, two string of. And you know what? String dot format percent dot zero. F should do it. Yeah, because I don't want it to have weird decimals. Um, okay, let's see what that gives us. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, hmm. 
I should really like to rotate it. Okay, okay, here's one thing we can do. So we're going to slightly nudge this down. So here we're gonna add plus not point one. Nudge down, and here we're gonna do local label alignment. And it's gonna start out as Less than 260 minus 1e minus 3, then the label alignment will be start. And then here we can just change this to be. is pretty well it's almost good what's going on with these guys Great news. My buddy who has a printer is willing to print a little test copy for me to work with. Uh, so let me see if I can figure out what's going on with these labels. Next anchor is set to middle. Oh. This nudge could be a little bigger. And also, let's do this. And we'll add in a couple of special cases.
stuff back. Pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, so let's send it to my buddy. So let's just make sure that there's no obvious problems before I get it printed. Okay. All right, so uh, download this. So I wonder if you can click and drag. No, no, you can't. That's okay. Let me just make sure that. the stream. I'm going to head upstairs, I'm going to pick them up and see what they're like.